Okay. Is Mr. White? Mr. Kravis? Ms. Borby. Ms. Borby, probably barely heard hear her. Okay, today we're gonna do a modeling situation with, well, you don't know the function, we're not gonna even tell you. You gotta figure that part out, but it's with a projectile in motion. Is that okay? Can we say that? I, I, I think so, that'll work. So very first, you, um, the first day you're gonna be collecting a video, so you make a video, and uh, that'll be something you know how to do. Now, we're going to show you how to insert it and start to do the analysis. So insert, movie, uh, sorry, it's on the desktop, I believe. Let's see what sort of stuff you have here. Is that the longer one? Yeah. Good. Okay, there's our movie. And we'll just, you can use whatever device you want to make the movie. We've just used the eyesight camera. Page auto range makes your whole screen look nice. Okay, so this is a video of me throwing a ball. You see it lands in the screen and everything. Uh, it's sort of similar to just doing with a picture, except there's, um, it's with a movie. So first things first, we need to identify a constant. Good, you see how Mr. White clicked on the red dots there and got all these um, options on the right-hand side. So here's my, here's me. How tall am I? You are five meters and 10 centimeters. I'm five, five feet. <laughs> how about how about just two meters? There we go. How about that? Are you that tall? I'm pretty yeah. tall. Are you two meters tall? He's not I'm pretty tall. No way. Well, you should try to be as accurate as you can. How about 1.9 meters? <laughs> All right, that's better. So 1.9 meters. You could same with the faces. It doesn't matter what your constant is. You can bring a mood meter stick out there if you want. Um, it it's just, up to you, but it just make has sure to it's be, accurate. It has to be at the same location as wherever the ball is leaving. So it can't be here in the foreground. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Makes sense to me. I don't know about some of these kids, but uh, well, I, I think we'll be all right. I, I think they're good <laughs> kids. <laughs> He's all so right. positive. So, um, so our constant's made. I think we're even going to make an axis. You can click on this axis button, throw it right there, put it at my feet. And you guys really think through the function that you're choosing and where you're going to put this origin because that can make the project easier or harder. We're not giving you the most optimal place to put it, possibly. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. Maybe we know. are. We can put it wherever we want. So yeah. I'm going to throw the ball. Ooh, nice okay. throw. See these two buttons here? Um, I can advance one frame. So now I'm just going to click this button right here, add, add point. point. Good. And I'm just going to click on the ball, and it advances a frame for me. Ooh, look at that. Sped up pretty good there. What a throw. That's sort of funny. It's like it takes three shots real quick, and then it mm -hmm. waits a second. And try to, whatever object that you're using, try to hit the object in the same place every time. So if you have a ball, then use the center of the ball each time. Right. The ball works well because it's about the size of a point, but if you're using something else or if you're closer to the camera, use the front of the ball because sometimes the uh, you'll see a trail, like a, I guess just a trail. That's a good way to describe it. Okay, make sure you, the, your video, the ball lands in the shot. That's good to see. And then, oh, did it bounce? And it if bounce. you, you miss one? if you want to use a totally different object and a shorter frame and uh, that's, that's fine as well. It doesn't matter. Any object that has been thrown in the air and comes back down. Whatever displacement it doesn't, it's, it's not who can throw it farthest or something like this. Right. Okay. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to go back to the start here. Notice the points are staying on the graph. Just go back to the start. You're going to click this button right here. It says sync movie to graph. So that was at 3.5 seconds on the video, but it's time zero on the graph. Does that make sense, Ooh, Mr. Kerbis? That's very good. Never yeah. seen that before. That's so good. I just put in a zero here. So it just shifts the graph. See, see at the bottom here it says 3.5. Mm -hmm. When I push OK, it'll turn basically to zero. Smart. Okay. So now we're, we're almost ready to go here. Um, <clears throat> very important part. Your project is comparing the horizontal displacement to the vertical height. So we have to be very clear. Our axis is time. We don't want time. We don't that, want that is so, so important. Don't mess that up. Time is so old school. <laughs> okay, so we basically want this to be measured in meters and the height to be measured in meters. So it's measured in time right now. It'll actually look pretty similar anyways, but we're just going to make this X 
Okay, and then this Y. So in order to do only Y, click more and unclick the X right there. And we'll just be left with our blue and it will Ooh. auto arrange. And if it didn't, just push auto right here, auto scale. Excellent. There you go. So your task is to find a function, algebraically find, not curve fitting, not you know regression or anything. Algebraically find a function that fits that these data points uh, as best as you can. Pay very close attention to the rubric. That's how you're assessed. If we see any regression or anything, we don't care. We want to see your knowledge and understanding of transformation of whatever well, function you we choose. We care in the sense that it won't be graded. How about that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good luck.